Okay, again, this is one of the videos where I am re-recording. So as you notice, there's already a bunch of stuff in purple and pink and green. And it's because I've already pre-recorded this, but for some reason, um, the application was giving me a little bit of an issue and not uploading my videos. So I'm coming back in to re-record a few of them, okay? So this is the first part of module 26, and for the first topic, it says determining if graphs have symmetry with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. So what that means is if I flip the graph over the x-axis, I want to know if the graph lands on itself. And in this particular case, if I were to flip over the top half, over the x-axis, it actually lands on the bottom half. And vice versa, if I were to take the bottom half and flip it over the x-axis, it would land on the top half. So this graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, which is why I wrote down x-axis over here. Now, for y-axis symmetry, if I take the graph and I reflect it over the y-axis, does it land on itself? So if I take what's on the right-hand side of the y-axis and I reflect it over, it actually lands on the left-hand side. And if I take what was on the left-hand side and reflect it over the y-axis, it lands on the right-hand side of the graph. So it does have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. For the origin, you have to do both flips at the same time, okay? So, I'm going to do, um, I think I did quarters in this, this uh, section. So what I did was I took what was in quadrant one and I flipped it over the y-axis, then I flipped it over the x-axis and it became here. So quadrant one turned into what, it landed on what was in quadrant three. Okay, then I moved on to quadrant two. If I flip that over the y-axis, it becomes this arc and if I flip that over the axis it becomes this arc so what was in quadrant two landed on what was in quadrant four then i moved on to quadrant three it took this arc flipped it over the y-axis and then flipped it over the x-axis and so what was in quadrant three landed on what was in quadrant one and then finally i took this arc and reflected over the y-axis and then over the x-axis and so what was in quadrant four landed on what was in quadrant two, okay? So it does land on itself. Therefore, it does have symmetry with respect to the origin. I just wanted to point out one thing. When I was um, flipping over these different arcs in each quadrant, I was always flipping it over the y-axis first and then the x-axis. I do need to flip it over both axes to be talking about the origin. However, I don't necessarily have to flip it over the Y first and then the X. I could have flipped this arc over the X axis first and got this arc, then flipped that resulting arc over the Y axis and I still would have landed in the same position, okay? So it doesn't matter whether you flip over the X first and then flip over the Y later or you do it in a reverse order. Just as long as you're flipping over both axes before deciding whether the graph lands on itself. So we went ahead and did this one. This was the original graph here. And so we flipped it over the X axis, but it would make the arc go downward, which does not land on the original. So it does not have X axis symmetry. We flipped it over the Y axis and got this pink graph that does not land on the original, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And then for the origin, we did both, right? And it doesn't matter whether you flip over the y and then the x, or you flip over the x first and then the y. You're still going to end up with a graph here in this quadrant. And that does not land on itself, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the origin either. If it doesn't have symmetry with respect to any one of these, then what you say is the graph has no symmetry. Now let's look at this one. If I flip it over the x-axis, that means this part of the curve is gonna go, and this was the original, by the way. This here is the original. So if I flip it over the x-axis, this part becomes this curve, and this part becomes this curve. 
but that green curve does not land on the original red curve. So it does not have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If I flip the curve over the y-axis, this curve becomes this green curve, and this curve becomes this green curve. Notice again that the green graph does not land on the red graph, the original. So it does not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Now we're going to do both flips and see what happens. So if I flip this over the y-axis, I get this. Flip this over the y-axis, I get this. I flipped over y. Now I have to flip over x. So this part of the arc flips up here, and this part of the arc flips down there. Well, now that does land onto the original graph, so therefore this graph does have symmetry with respect to the origin. For this parabola, this was the original graph. If I flip it over the x-axis, it ends up becoming a downward curve, which does not land on the original graph itself. So it does not have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If I flip it over the y-axis, um, it, it does land on itself. This right-hand side will land on the left side, and the left-hand side will land on the right-hand side. So it does have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. Now if I do both flips, so if I flip it over the x and then over the y, it's going to result in this curve here. Or if I flip over the y first, it looks exactly the same, and then flip over the x, I'm still going to have a curve down here, which does not land on the original. So it does not have symmetry with respect to the origin. Over here, this was the original graph. Okay, and so then if I flip it over the x-axis, it does land onto itself, so it has x-axis symmetry. If I flip it over the y-axis, I get this green graph over here, which does not land on the original, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And if I do both flips, flip it over the y-axis, and then flip it over the x-axis, I still end up with this green graph, which does not land on the original, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the origin. And then finally, we have this graph here, which is just a line. And so if I flip it over the x-axis, this goes downward, this goes upward, I have this green line here, which does not land onto the original, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. If I take the graph and I flip it over Y, take this part, flip it over Y, I still end up with this green line here, and that does not land on the original, so it does not have symmetry with respect to the Y axis. Now, if I do both, I flip this over the Y, flip that over the Y, then flip that result over the X, flip this result over the X, I do land on the original. So it does have symmetry with respect to the origin. Now, the next topic, again, I apologize. I'm going to talk it all out, but there's a lot going on here, okay? Um, for this topic, it says testing an equation for symmetry. So I'm not given the graph. I'm just given an equation, okay? And so we need to um, figure out how would we... Well, how would we decide whether it has x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, or origin symmetry when you're not given an image, right? You can't flip anything over, okay? Well, there are some rules. So, when you're flipping something over the x-axis, what was at the top is now at the bottom, and what was at the bottom is now at the top. Essentially, what you've done is you've taken those y values and you've switched the signs. So that's exactly what you do when you're testing for x-axis symmetry. Wherever you see a y, you're going to now plug in a negative y, okay? For the y-axis symmetry, you're flipping it over the y-axis. So what was on the right-hand side becomes on the left-hand side, and what was on the left-hand side will become the right-hand side. What's happening there? Your x values are now changing signs, right? On the right, you have positive x values, and now they're on the left side and the negative x values okay so you replace all of your x's with negative x's now when you're doing the symmetry of the origin remember we're flipping both we're flipping over the x and we're flipping over the y 
So when I flip over the x-axis, I have to perform that operation. And when we flip over the y-axis, I have to perform that operation. We just have to do them both at the same time. Okay? So doing these parts separately is not going to tell you anything about the origin symmetry. You have to do both parts at the same time in order to test for the uh, symmetry at the origin. Okay? Now all you do is once you plug in these values, you simplify and then you see if it equals the original equation. If it does, it has that particular symmetry. If it does not equal the original equation, that's the same thing as it not landing on itself visually in a graph, and then therefore it does not have that symmetry, okay? So here I plugged in negative y for y, and since the y up here was positive, I went ahead and divided by negative one so that I could get y by itself and then compare what was on the right hand side. Notice now though I have positive 8x and I have negative 5 which does not equal the original which is why I said I do not have x-axis symmetry. For y-axis symmetry we plug a negative x for x so this guy right here became a negative x. Then that makes it positive 8x and I still have positive 5 but this does not equal the original which is why I do not have y-axis symmetry. Here I plugged in the negative for y and the negative for x, left that alone, multiplied that, got the positive, but I do want y by itself so I can compare this side. So I got y by itself, but now I have a negative 8x and a negative 5. This does not equal the original, so this does not have symmetry with respect to the origin either. So this guy has no symmetry whatsoever. For this example, we did the same thing, plugged in negative y for y, divided by negative 1, ended up with these two terms, which are not the exact same as the original. For y-axis symmetry, you plugged in negative x, but remember, if I'm trying to evaluate negative x squared, it's a negative x times a negative x, which is a positive x squared. And all I did was bring this down, okay, so all I evaluated was the exponent I hadn't done the subtraction. But since these are not like terms, you can't subtract them anyway. And if you compare that to the original, they are equivalent. And so it does have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. For the origin, we do both. y is negative y now, and x is negative x. Same thing here. If I evaluate that, I just have x squared. Divide everybody by negative 1. I get y equals this, and this does not equal the original. So this one only had y-axis symmetry, and that's it. Now, over here, um, we have plug in negative y, and we get, divide by negative 1, we get y equals 6x cubed, and then um, it becomes positive 6x cubed, which does not equal the original. When you plug in negative x, remember it's negative x times negative x times negative x because the cube, it actually ends up being negative x cubed. And if I multiply that with the negative 6, we end up with positive 6x cubed. And so that still does not equal the original. Now if I plug in negative y for y and negative x for x, I still get the negative x cubed, so I still get the positive 6x cubed, but to get the y by itself, we have to divide by the negative 1, which gives me a positive y and a negative 6x cubed. And this does equal the original. So this one has symmetry with respect to the origin. Over here, this was my original equation. 20x to the 4th plus 18y to the 4th equals 73. And so if we plug in negative y, negative y times negative y, times negative y times negative y is just a positive y to the fourth. So that became just positive y to the fourth. This does equal the original, so it has x-axis symmetry. For y-axis symmetry, we plugged in negative x for x. And again, if we have four of them to multiply, we're going to end up with positive x to the fourth. And this is the same as the original, so it has symmetry with respect to the y-axis. For the origin, I plug in negative x and the negative y at the same time. 
this becomes positive x to the fourth, this becomes positive y to the fourth, and then the result is the equivalent to the original. So it has a uh, true with respect to the origin. So for this one, you would have to list all three of those symmetries. Now, we've got three more. So for x axes, plug in negative y for y. Negative y squared is negative y times negative y, which is a positive y squared. And this does equal the original, so it, I circled x axis. Plug in negative x for x. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared. That does equal the original, so I circled y axis. Negative x and negative y at the same time. That's positive x squared, that's positive y squared. This does equal the original, so I circled origin as well. Now for this equation, plug in negative y for y. Negative y squared is positive y squared. x and negative 4 stay the same. This does not equal the, or it does equal the original, so we circled the x-axis. Plug in negative for x. Well, plus a negative is just a minus, and these are not equal to the original. These two terms are, but this one term in the middle is not the same as the original, Therefore, the equation is not the same as the original, so it does not have y-axis symmetry. Here we plugged in both at the same time. We get a positive y squared, but we still get that negative x, which makes this one not work either. Now over here, we test for the x-axis by plugging in the negative y. So when I multiply those, I get negative xy equal to 2. That's not the same as positive xy equal to 2. So we do not have symmetry with respect to the x-axis. Then we tried the y-axis, plugged in negative x. When I multiply those, again, I get negative xy equal to 2, which is not the same as positive xy equal to 2. So I do not have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And then finally, when I plug in negative x for x and negative y for y at the same time, when I multiply these, I do get positive xy equal to 2. And that does equal the original. So it have symmetry with respect to the origin.